that boys is dumb, man. Today I'm coming at you with another reaction video. The Thomas Michael Jordan disrespecting NBA players. Now look, I don't know. People say that I hate Jordan, but you keep sending me his videos on Instagram. Makes no sense. You know what I'm saying? Look, 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 look. Michael Jordan, bro. Time he dis I I know I know that Jordan was a uh, he was a trash talker. You know what I'm saying? As long as he ain't disrespect LeBron, we ain't got no problem. As long as he, as long as he ain't disrespect my boy, we cool. Like the whole video gonna be cool. You know what I'm saying? As long as he ain't disrespect the goat, as in goat, I mean greatest of all time, LeBron James, we cool. And, uh, and I'm, I'm gonna give this video a thumbs up. But man, I'm ready to get into this. I'm ready to get into this, man. If you're new, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. <laughs> Let me know down below what you want me to react to next. Don't forget to follow my Instagram at tb. Doug. If you have a video you want to send to me, bro, I'm, re I'm 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 watching everything. I promise. Just send me in on Instagram, but you have to follow me. Stop sending me videos and not follow me. That's disrespectful. Come on, be real. And let's go ahead and get into this video. The level of fear that he inspired in others. R.P. Kobe. Insane. It didn't matter. He wanted to come in and other kill passes, you. Man. These are the times that Michael Jordan disrespected NBA players and Jordan's beef with his own teammate, Steve Kerr, got so violent their own coach had to get involved. It was 1995 and Steve Kerr was playing in his first practice game with Jordan. For some reason, Coach Phil Jackson decided to have Jordan and Kerr guard each other. At this point, Jordan didn't know who Kerr was, so he had no respect for him. Hey, Jordan started talking trash, roughing fuck? Kerr out, and surprisingly, Kerr was talking trash right back. Hey, no, you gotta love, you gotta you know love Jordan, that Jordan, that's not gonna slide. So he decided to make this practice physical. Jordan got the ball, drove to the basket, and hit Steve Kerr with a hard foul. Obviously, this frustrated Kerr. So, on the very next play, he wanted to return the favor. Driving up the court, Kerr hit Jordan with an elbow right to the chest. And that is when Jordan lost it. He hauls off and hits me in the chest. And I just haul off and hit him right in the eye. This man literally right. gave his teammate. Be real. To all my Jordan fans out there, if you were Steve Kerr in that situation, if Jordan just hit you for no reason, like like he he was playing tough with you, so you decided to play tough back, and he hits you for no reason, what you doing? I don't care who it is, Michael Jordan. I'm not one, bro. I'm not one for fighting. I'm not one for fighting, but Michael Jordan, I'm hitting you, bro. What? What? Michael Jordan, bro, you got to see me. That simple, man. A black eye. Not only yeah, that, but right when this happened, the entire team had to come and break the fight up. And then Phil Jackson had to kick Jordan out of practice. And if Jordan was willing to do that to his teammate, what the hell did he do to people he was up against? No, that's crazy. Well, in the 1996 NBA Finals, Michael Jordan destroyed Hall of Famer Gary Payton. The Bulls beat the Supersonics 4-2, and Jordan collected his fourth championship ring. But 25 years later, Gary Payton thinks Jordan beat him by luck. He, gotta let that he was go. being interviewed for he Jordan's documentary, go, The man. Last Dance. And in that interview, Gary has all types of wild takes. He talks about beating Jordan up, slowing him down, getting aggressive with him. I made it a point. I said, just tire him out. Tire the f out of him. You just got to tire him out. And if he had done that work. just a little bit <laughs> earlier, they probably could have won the finals. Now, the beautiful thing is, with this documentary, Jordan got to see a clip of Gary talking about this. And his reaction became one of Michael Jordan's most iconic, disrespectful moments. Hitting him and banging him and hitting him and banging him. It took a toll on Mike. It took a toll and then <laughs> <laughs> I so disrespectful. him a little bit. And then the, the, the series changed. And I wish I could have did it earlier. I don't know if the outcome would be different, but it, it, it was a different. <laughs> <laughs> That's so disrespectful. This man hey, doesn't even have to say- But y'all was the- Y'all watched it. 
I know for a fact, I ain't even gotta watch it to know the Supersonics, come on, bro. It was no that wasn't even a fair matchup. Like the Bulls was just going to win that. Like that's not a that's not a fair matchup. You know what I mean? But what was it like? Did he change it? Was was he was he making it hard for Jordan? And don't bro, come on. Like give it to me straight. Like don't lie. I know that you a Michael Jordan fan. Was he like, come on, was he was it that easy for Jordan? Let me know. Don't lie. The word. He can just laugh. And it's the most disrespectful thing I've ever seen. Yeah, that, that went viral. But what happens when Michael Jordan disrespects one of the biggest trash talkers in NBA history? Garnett. Kevin Garnett. Yes, sir. Well, it was 1996. That boy, stay here and Garnett's Wolves were facing Jordan's Bulls. With it being Garnett's rookie season, this game shouldn't have been close. Thanks. But shockingly, they were only down by three points at halftime. Garnett and his teammate J.R. Ryder were having a great game. So, with Garnett feeling himself, he made the biggest mistake of his entire career. He decided to start talking trash. Garnett was telling JR, keep killing Jordan out there, that they were destroying him, that it was easy. But what he didn't realize was that Michael Jordan was standing right next to them and he could hear every word they were saying. He knew he was and wrong. at that point, it was too late. That Jordan so came out at the second half and lit the wolves up completely destroying any hope they had at winning. That's Coming a foul. Coming up by 21 points. Completely foul? destroying any hope they had at winning. That's a foul. Coming up by 21 points. With Jordan scoring damn near every basket. And with the clock winding down, Garnett was pulled out of the game. That is when Jordan walked by the Wolves bench. And he let Garnett know to never disrespect the GOAT again. Jordan yes, that man, know, we all go like this. Jordan yeah, that man. Mike came down, okay, young fella, okay, okay, damn, young fella, damn, damn, y'all, y'all done, damn, y'all <laughs> Jordan that talk dude, to Mike every man. Yeah, Garnett learned his lesson right then and there. Jordan but that dude. there's one NBA legend that doesn't give a damn who Michael Jordan is. I'm talking about you gotta Charles love Charles Barkley. The disrespect between Barkley and Jordan got so bad, it cost them their entire friendship. They met as rookies in 1984, and over the next few seasons, they grew to respect each other's game. And by 1992, they were best friends, going golfing together, grabbing drinks, puffing cigars. They were just having a good time. It wasn't born with space However, it didn't Charles matter Barkley. how friendly they were away from basketball. Because when it came time to ball, they wanted to kill each other. That's how During the 1993 be. finals, no Jordan was play. willing to do anything to beat Charles Barkley. So, right before game four, he decided to give Charles a $20,000 diamond earring. Bro. What a great friend. I don't give up, bro. I don't care what you do. You can buy my mama a house. You can buy my grandma a house. This is the finals. You think you think I'm finna let a diamond earring come between me winning what I've been working for my whole life? Jordan, come, boy, you must be, boy, an earring? A earring, bro, Charles Barkley, you gotta be about the dumb, bro. And, and I love, uh, bro, Charles Barkley, I wrote a, I wrote a, um, essay about you in middle school. I think you, 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 LeBron was the first person, no, you, LeBron or Stoudemire was the first person I ever wrote, like, an essay about, like, or what an NBA player. Most likely it was LeBron. But Charles Barkley, for you two, bro, come on, man. How did this man get in your head because of a diamond earring? Man, man. Right? Well, Jordan later both. told his assistant coach Something, why he really did that, saying, Charles won't get in my way the rest of the series. Crazy. What's 20000 to me? He thinks we're great friends. I hate that fat Oh Damn. my god. He's over here playing 4D chess. But crazy, the man. disrespect doesn't stop there. Even after Barkley's career was over, Jordan took every opportunity that he could to disrespect the poor guy. Well, we got you there, Michael. How are your ribs feeling, by the way? Uh, a lot better, a lot better. And we've tried to get some answers out of Charles here. Maybe 
will reveal what you say. I'm just glad his little ribs are all right. He's been <laughs> whining about him for like two or three weeks now. <laughs> Don't worry about it, Charles. You you can forget I'm still the boss. If you need a job, I'm about you to be quiet. <laughs> see this happen? Can you tell us anything tonight? <laughs> no, I can only tell you that I have a very good player coming to Washington, D.C., and I may not need another. <laughs> no, that's the first time I've seen it. And his initials are like CB. I'll tell you what. Not CB. KB is KB. pretty good. <laughs> I appreciate that. No I'm problem. Not, I'm not sure I might even consider coming down to you up to any. <laughs> <laughs> Stay at TNT. I think that's your best effort. <laughs> I, I appreciate that. No problem. Sheesh. That was disrespectful. No, but crazy. you want to know what else is disrespectful? It's not dropping a like and subscribing to the channel. I put my heart like into this. That. When you don't like subscribe, that. it cuts deep. I so, what are you doing? But anyways, I like the that. beef between Jordan and Barkley didn't stop there. Because in 2005, it happened again. This time, on the Oprah Winfrey Show. Don't mess with Oprah Riser. Uh, Don't you ever disrespect Michael Jackson. I know when to eat, when not to eat. <laughs> <laughs> now, you, you, you do say, though, Come that on, he is man. cheap. I've heard that. Oh, my God. I say that. Everybody says that. If you do that, you gotta be cheap. You're not. No, I, I don't think. See, you're Some dressed. Things. He's dressed too well to be cheap. Thank you, you very much. money on clothes. Oh, okay. <laughs> but when you say he's I cheap. Wish you hey, uh, oh, yeah. All I got is cheap joint stuff. <laughs> Is it true that you all still split the bill, that you wouldn't just say, let me yeah, take care of it? No. You know, when you get in the limelight, like, you have a lot of freeloading friends. Yeah. I don't want ever, him to ever think that, that I'm just hanging out. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So no. we fight over the bill. But he is. <laughs> I'm glad you brought up the motorcycle thing, because I hate that. I want you to know that. You do. Thank Has you. he gotten you on a motorcycle? Hell no. <laughs> you know, I'm sorry, the seat's not big enough. Yeah. Uh, now, nah, this man is... When you ride a motorcycle, you have to really be focused on seeing the traffic ahead. He doesn't know about this. He's never ridden a motorcycle. He never understands what it takes to be a winner. <laughs> no! I, I, no I, gotta I, get love, the I gotta love Jordan for that. That's crazy. You never understand what it takes to be a winner. That's so... <laughs> but then if I, if I get the rest of the guys laughing at him, Yes. He'll always bring the weather thing up. How many rings you got? <laughs> he always throws that up yeah. at me. Man, if I had Scottie Pippen and Dennis Robin, I'd have won some too. You were... Now, I think we could all tell, you know, this was some lighthearted trash talk. Yeah, they were definitely still friends. Here. I think they still friends. Well, that was until a few years later. Oh, it's not when Jordan lie. took things too personally. See, by 2012, Jordan owned the Charlotte Hornets, and they had just finished a season with the worst record in NBA history. Seven wins and 59 no, losses. Nice. So Barkley went on an ESPN radio show and criticized Jordan's ownership skill, saying, I love Michael, but he's just not done a good job. Even though he's one of my great friends, I can't get on here and tell you he's done a great job. And when Jordan heard this quote, that's, he felt that's being betrayed. Real, that's How being could a real. friend criticize him like that? That's being so real, the though. next day. He, no, 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 no. That's being real. Bro, come on. If my friend was to have a um, if my friend was to have a basketball team and he did terrible, I'm letting it be known, bro, you did terrible. Like it's part of my job to talk about basketball. If if, if your name come up on that, I'm not gonna say, oh well, it was his first time. No, you did tell seven and fifty nine. It's your dumb, bro. Come on, bro. That's come on. No. They spoke on the phone, and Jordan said he was so upset he never wanted to hear from Barkley again. And it turns out they haven't spoken since. It had to be more to it. Yes. How are you guys these days? Are you friends? Are you talking? Are you We're not friends right now, and I wish him nothing but the best. Are you hopeful that someday you guys will be close again? I would like that, but I, I'm not... I can't have people around me who, if I have to be honest about them, they're going to get mad at me. That's facts. Damn. The disrespect just went too far, That's man. That's not even disrespectful. Sucks. But... At least Jordan's disrespect didn't cost Charles any money. Because for Kemba Walker, he lost tens of millions of dollars. 
all thanks to Michael Jordan. Remember when I said the Charlotte Hornets were trash in 2011? Well, Jordan wanted to turn things around. So in the 2011 draft, he picked up Kemba Walker, Walker. hoping that he could that turn the slow, entire though. franchise around. No. And after just eight seasons, Kemba made three all-star teams, single-handedly brought them to the playoffs twice, and became the team's all-time leading scorer. He was doing everything he could to put Charlotte on the map. I mean, Jordan should have been thanking this man every night. So when Kemba's contract expired in 2018, you'd think that Jordan would have done everything he could to make sure the best player he's ever had stayed in Charlotte, right? Well, when the two sat down and tried to work out a deal, Jordan disrespected Kemba. Instead of paying him the $220 million that Kemba wanted, Jordan only offered him 160 mil. No. That's 60 million less than what he asked for. And Kemba was upset. He knew that without him, the Hornets were going to be the laughing stock of the NBA. Back. So with that, Kemba left immediately. And he let his agent know he wanted to play somewhere else. Celtics, right? And just a few days later, he signed to the Boston Celtics for $140 million. Stupid. Yeah. 20 million less than what Jordan offered. Kemba literally lost tens of millions of dollars Stupid. just to spite Michael Jordan. But at least Kemba just walked away and didn't let things get out of hand. Because be one too, time, man. a teammate tried to end Jordan's career because he was tired of all the disrespect. Back in 1988, Michael Jordan was still chasing his first NBA championship, and he was hoping to win it with his best friend, Charles Oakley. So when the Bulls ended up trading Oakley away, Jordan was furious, and there was no one better for him to take his anger out on than the guy that replaced his friend, Bill Cartwright. It started at their very first practice together. Jordan started calling the dude old, saying that he sucked, he was always hurt. Things got so bad, Jordan gave Cartwright the nickname Medical Bill. That's and it crazy. didn't stop at name calling. During passing drills at practice, Jordan just kept whipping the ball at him, like, like they were playing dodgeball or something. And this drove Cartwright to his breaking point. Like he was about to snap. Up. One more sign of disrespect from Jordan, and he was gonna let him have it. Fast forward a couple of weeks, and it happened again. In a game against the Hornets, Cartwright had one of the worst nights of his career. So Jordan got up, and he told the entire team that Cartwright didn't belong in the NBA. That's good. And that was it. That was all Cartwright needed to hear. Cartwright gets Michael aside, and he says, look, if you ever do anything like that again, you will never play basketball because I'm gonna break both your legs. All right, uh, just to put things into perspective a little bit, Bill Cartwright was seven foot one and 250 pounds. If he wanted to break Jordan's legs, he, he could have done it. And uh, I don't think Jordan would have won six rings with no legs. Seven foot one, what? I mean, I'm looking up to him, seven foot one. He came up to me saying, I'm breaking your legs. Bro, you got it. I apologize, sir. You got it. I'm sorry. So uh, that talk that they had oh, no. set Jordan straight. After that, he stopped the disrespect and they finally started getting along. I mean, in 1991, they even won their first of three titles together. So uh, I guess that MJ trash talk ended up being a great thing for him. But not everyone can be so lucky. Sometimes, Jordan might say something so disrespectful, it'll end an entire career. Like Muggsy Bogues. Oh, I heard this story it was the 1995 times. playoffs. Hornets versus Bulls. And one more loss for Charlotte meant their season was over. So everyone thought the Hornets were done. Everyone except one player, Muggsy. Losing was not an option. This man is the shortest player in NBA history at just five foot three. You think he's gonna pass up a chance to beat Michael Jordan? You know and what? 
this is case in my head. The fact that y'all be saying LeBron went and last in the NBA back then, and Muggs, Muggsy Bowles didn't come, bro. The championship? This man would go down as, as a legend. To say. His and career. The fact that this man was on, um, what was that movie called? Uh, he was on Space Jam. The aliens took his superpowers. What did they get? Bro, that, nah, that's crazy. That's crazy. You're dependent on nah, this win. Crazy. So in the fourth quarter of game four, with the game time, Muggsy Bogues dribbled up the court. With just a few seconds left on the clock, Muggsy was getting ready to take the game winning shot. And that's when Michael Jordan stared Muggsy down and yelled, shoot it, you f midget. Jesus, man. This man needs to chill a little bit. This isn't an Xbox 360 lobby. You can't be saying that. You're finna get me canceled just reading the quote. Damn. As if being the shortest player in NBA history isn't hard enough. You gotta deal with MJ doing stuff like that? But I, I guess the trash talking worked because Muggsy pulled up, took the shot, and missed it. Losing the Hornets the game and the series. Muggsy's miss that. was the only thing he could think about. How you I mean, don't he even went on to tell Johnny Bott, a time. Bulls assistant coach, that this miss against Jordan was the one moment that ruined his career. And I mean, the stats back that up. Muggsy went from averaging 11 points a game to just five. And he was out of the NBA entirely by 2001. But I mean, uh, if you gotta look at the bright side, at least Muggsy didn't turn into a meme. Cause there's a lot of moments in the NBA that get mean to hell. That like, what is even going on in this picture? Yeah. How, how does this even happen? Yeah. Oh. You want to hear more about that? Well, then click on this video right this here. This man is so far with this. Oh my God. Don't want to see that. But look, man. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Michael Jordan really did like that. I did not know he was this disrespectful. But man, if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Let me know down below as you want me to react to it next. Don't forget to follow my Instagram at tb.dub. Hey, yo, man. I'm out.